Oh yeah, Trey.
I know you may be sleep deprived today because of the time change, but thank God he woke us up this morning. Because I guarantee you, there were some people that went to bed last night and did not get up this morning. So we want to praise God in everything that we do. Because he is good and his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. We want to come forth praising God this morning in the beauty of his holiness. We want to come praising God not just for the things and stuff, but we want to praise God this morning for who he is. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world, the way, the truth, and the life, the soon coming king, Jesus the Christ. We want to praise him and praise him and praise him even more because he has been so good. He has been so good to us. Even when we, even when we don't see it, even when we don't feel it, God has made sure that he is with us. We have a promise from him that he will be with us in everything that we do, in every desire that we have. He is with us all the time. When we feel like we are alone and there is no one to help, Jesus Christ, he is our help. He is our help in everything that we do. So we want to give him praise today because he loves us. He came looking for us. We didn't go searching for him. He searched for us. So we want to give him all the praise. He has saved us from a mighty long way. He has brought us back from the depths of him. And we thank and praise him this morning. We thank and praise him this morning. But he is good. And his mercy endures forever. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Because he is good and great. We're going to have the praise team come up now and minister to us in song. Hallelujah.
position, oh God, that they won't be oh, disobedient, oh God, but they will be obedient unto the man of God for what you have told him, oh God. God, we lay down his wife slowly in your anointing, oh God, that you continue to give her the pulse, the grace, oh God. We know that sometimes that she may be tired, oh God, but God, we ask that you give her just enough strength to continue to get fight the race, oh God. You give her just enough strength to continue to keep her faith to the Lord, that you give her just enough strength to continue to lay her for the sick and they will be healed. God, we ask that you give them the, the strength like Ohio, God. For God, they don't look near and far, but they look to the hills from which come in their help. They know that they help come from you. Well, God, God, we pray a prayer over everyone in this sanctuary, oh God. Those that are tired, those that are weak, those that are in pain, oh God. God, we ask that whatever answer that they are looking for, oh God, it is given once this service, service is over, oh God, that whatever that they need, that you give it to them on today, oh God. God, we love you. We thank you. We adore you, oh God. God, we won't take back anything that you give to us, oh God. God, we will put our feet on it on us today, oh God. God, we will tell you thank you in the end for what you are doing, oh God. We thank you. We love you and adore you. And in Jesus' name, that we thank you and we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Minister, for your powerful, fervent prayer. How many of you know that no matter what you're going through, or what you are doing, through, I know you know. that God will continue to pull you through? God, I thank you for pulling me through. It was times when I knew I was not going to come out of it. I don't know how I'm going to get out of it. But God pulled me through. So let this song minister to you. Hallelujah. Through
God, I need you. Oh, God, I love you. Oh, God, come up in my situation. Show yourself mighty and strong. He'll never walk out on you. No, never. No, never. Yeah. He'll never walk out on you. No, never. No, never. Everybody sing it to yourself. Oh, Lord, you said you'll never leave me. Oh Lord, you said you'll never leave me. Oh Lord, you said you'll never leave me. So you'll never. He will never. No, never. No, never. Oh, he'll never. He'll never. Hey, I don't matter what it is. It don't matter what it is. Oh, 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 oh. Sometimes you just gotta think from your soul. No words will do, God. I'm a witness that he'll never, no, never, no, never. When my brother died, when my daddy died, I'm a witness that he'll never. I've been robbed, I've been raped. I've been beat, I've been scorned. I've been broke, I've been broke. I've been lost, I've been turned. I've been weak, I've been bruised. But he never, he never through everything I've been through. I'm always there that he'll never, no, never. I've been black, I've been blue. I've been down just like you. Oh, but he never, Jesus. No, never, no, never. Oh, 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 Somebody give God worship in this place. Hallelujah. For the Bible says they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. I don't know about y'all, but I heard somebody give a testimony up here. I heard somebody be set free up here. It's not easy to tell people your testimony, but God will allow you at the appointed time to tell your testimony and when God allows them to do it we ought to praise God that they were released hallelujah somebody give God a praise and say hallelujah hallelujah because if she made it that means you can make it. my 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 look at your neighbor and say if she made it that means you can make it She's a living witness. 
that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Not only will God not leave you, but he won't stop protecting you. Do I got a witness up in here that can say, when I thought I was about to lose my mind, God said, nope, 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 nope. You got to keep your mind together. I can't let you lose it this season because I got greater in store for you. I thought I was losing my mind, but God held me. He held me together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all don't know that y'all are walking, talking miracles. See, we overlook, Reverend Riggs, what, we, we, we overlook what we've been through. But would you witness to your neighbor and say, if you only knew. The struggles I've been through. You would shout for me. You would give God glory for me. Have bullets flying by my head, but I, I still made it. Had people leave me for dead, but I still made it. Had people count me out, but I'm still counted in. Had people just keep on scandalizing my name, but I, I still got a name that I can call on that's above all names. I praise him all by myself. He's been good. I don't know about you, but the Lord's been good to me. Somebody shout yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, praise team. I'm trying not to. I'm trying not to go crazy. I'm trying to keep it together. I'm trying to preach this sermon. But when I think about the goodness of Jesus, whew, I wish I had a church that would praise God. When you think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you. Hey! I tell y'all something, something that jumped in my spirit and didn't even jump in my spirit when it happened. But on my way here, we was on the freeway and almost had an accident. Me, my wife, and baby girl was in the car together. We normally drive separate. But we was all in the car together and a tow truck was right next to us. And because he was playing on his phone rim, he slammed on his brakes and started fishtailing right next to us. I slammed on my brakes, and my car started sliding, Dre. But when I just was in the midst of my worship feet, he said, it could have been you, and it could have came out different because he pulled the tow truck together, and he made my car. Hey! Don't get too comfortable with God. Just look over what God has done for you. Hallelujah! Victory after
after victory after victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to start thanking him for the seen and unseen dangers, for the things that he kept you from, from the things he saw you through, from the things that he shielded over you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's get to the word. Genesis chapter 45, verses 1 through 5 in the New Living Translation. We ask that everyone would stand in reverence to the word of God. God has just been good. And I dare not stop somebody from praising God when I don't know how much God has done for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 45, verses 1 through 5. You may remember this because this is a continuation of our sermon from last week. So we're going to read it together. It says, Joseph is standing no longer. There were many people in the room, and he said to his attendants, out with all of you. So he was alone with his brothers when he told them who he was. Then he broke down and wept. He wept so loudly that the Egyptians could hear him, and the word of it quickly carried to Pharaoh's palace. I am Joseph, he said to his brothers. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were speechless. They were stunned to realize that Joseph was standing there in front of them. Please come closer, he said to them. So they came closer, and he said again, I am Joseph your brother whom you sold into slavery in, in Egypt. But don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. Amen. And that is the reading of, that is the reading of the word and I wanted to continue our subject, Holla If You Feel Me, part two. Turn to your neighbor and say, holler if you feel me. Hallelujah. We give God glory. Amen for the word of God. My brothers and sisters, last week, uh, we talked about the story of Joseph and how we skip past all of the details of this story. The story starts off with the level of hatred that Joseph's brothers had for him because he was favored. Not only was he favored by his father, he was also anointed. For the Bible says that Joseph had a dream that he was going to rule someday and that everyone would bow to him. The Bible says that when Joseph tells them this, of his dreams, his brothers hated him even the more. So when the opportunity came to kill Joseph, the brothers jumped and conspired to kill Joseph and his dreams. For the Bible says in Genesis chapter 37, verses 18 through 20, when Joseph's brothers saw him coming, they recognized him from a distance. Touch your neighbor and say, they're going to recognize you from a distance. As he approached, they made plans to kill him. Here comes the dreamer, they said. Come on, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns where we can tell our father a wild animal has eaten him. Then we will see, watch this, what becomes of his dreams. So people that are hating you are not trying to kill you but they're trying to kill the dreams in you. 
But most people don't realize that God uses their hate, their jealousy, their envy to help you to get to where you're supposed to be, but with character attached. How many people in here can honestly say that you didn't stop me, baby? All you did is gave me resilience along the way. It allowed me to filter out phony folk. It allowed me to see who was really by my side because what I don't want to do is arrive at the place where God want me to be and I'm surrounded by phony people that really didn't want me here in the first place. All you did was show your hand and show me who you are so that I can see that when I get to where I'm supposed to be, I'm with authentic people. Is there anybody in here that can say, I lost some friends along the way. I lost some BFF, matter of fact, some good cousins that I thought was going to be from the womb to the tomb. I lost a lot of people along the way, but God says, I'm never leaving you, nor will I forsake you. I am always with you. So touch your neighbor and say, I ain't never alone. I'm always with God. I always got help. I always got protection. So run up on me if you want to. You don't understand the God that I serve and the God that protects me. I always got somebody with me. God allows Joe to be thrown in the pit in order to get him to the palace. Only reason why he has this type of attitude is because of what he's been through. <laughs> Woo! We all understand it. All we want to do is get to the dream. We don't understand that in order to get to the dream, interprets into purpose. Uh, 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 when, when we want to get to our purpose, we just want to fast forward and fast track to our purpose without no pain, but without pain, there is no purpose, and without purpose, there's no pain. Is there anybody in here that can say, if God would allow his own son to go through pain to get to purpose, then who am I? You got to be understanding of your under, of the, of the God that you serve to know that God don't put you through purpose without putting you through pain. <laughs> Says there's character. Uh, they threw him in the pit. They sold him for cheap to the Ishmaelites. We talked about that last week. Uh, uh, he was sold to Potiphar. Potiphar's wife lied on him. Potiphar didn't hear his case and sent him straight to prison. But I learned something, y'all, in my studies. In that time in Egyptian culture, that if a man slept with another man's wife, it was... Uh, guilty of execution. Y'all, y'all missed it. <laughs> Even though he lied on him, Potiphar's punishment could have been worse. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Here you are complaining about being wrongfully accused and in prison. But the fact of the matter is, is that you're still alive and you know because you were the chief person up under Potiphar who was the chief over the gym. So you knew that you got mercy. How do you deal with life when your low place is mercy? Woo! Y'all, y'all missed it. Say, how do you deal with life where the lowest of lows is really God's mercy? For the Bible says that the wages of sin but the gift of God is eternal life. That don't mean you ain't going to have to go through some struggles, man. That don't mean that it's going to be all peaches and cream and, and honey and, and everything that you would like for it to be, roses and, and everything that you thought you was going to get. But God says you got to still give God praise to the fact that you breathe. And that's the reason why the Bible says let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. I know you're going through some struggles. I know it, you barely crawled to get here, but you still got a reason to give God praise because I'm breathing. Somebody give God a praise right now and just say, God, I thank you that even in my low place,
This is where we left off last week. We left off last week with Joe going to jail. Joe goes to jail instead of the cross. That's why when I had the conversation with Joe, he says, listen, I'm still alive. He says, and because I'm still alive, I still know that my dream can come true. Yeah. If, 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 I know a lot of us got that biological clock thing going on, but baby, if you're still alive, you still got time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know who I'm talking to, but if, if, you, if your dream is to go back to school and be a professor, baby, you could be a professor at 50, you could be a professor at 60, you could be a professor at 70. Baby, you better understand something. If you're still breathing, you still got time. That's a word for somebody. If you're still breathing, you still got time. Joseph has now raised to the top again. He's rise to the top again um, and becomes favored even in prison. The Bible says in Genesis 39, verses 22 and 23, he says, before long, the warden, and this is a New Living Translation, he says, before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and over everything that happened in the prison. The warden had no more worries because Joseph took care of everything. The Lord was with him and caused everything he did to succeed. But the question is, how do you succeed in a low place? When I found out the geographical place where Joe was at, the prison was a beneath place. They created the prison up under the palace. (laughs) Because what most of us don't understand is that I might be in a low place, but I'm still on a fast track to where I'm supposed to go. (laughs) I wish I had an excited church. Because what you don't understand is that I might be in a low place, but I'm still on track to where God want me to go. Joseph is in prison, making prison work to his advantage. My mother taught me that whatever you do, do it with pride and dignity. My mama taught me that if you got a job being a janitor, then you should be the best janitor in the building. Can I pause for a moment? Because we haven't taught our new generation this. They, they, they have this entitlement thing. Like, they, the job owed them, not them owing the job. You were hired to do a job. And, and, and what my mama taught me is that no matter what you do, that's why when I was at the hospital and I worked in environmental services. That's just a fancy name for housekeeping. When I worked in environmental services, I was the youngest lead in the building because my mama taught me that whatever you do, do it with dignity. But, Mel, you want to know what made them promote me? I just got the download. You, wanna, you know what made, me, what made them promote me? My manager came to find me because I don't want y'all to, I don't want to paint a picture like I was perfect. My manager came to find me, Fee. I was in the closet, sleep. I had a rough night. Some of the best sleep is in the stall or in the closet. Oh, don't act like y'all ain't sat on that toilet and put your head right there on your knee. Somebody banged on the stall because you in there snoring. (laughs) But I'm in the closet. But what was taught to me at Mount Charity from a young boy was that the truth. My manager knew I was asleep. She opened the doors. I'm literally wiping. She said, was you asleep? Now, I don't know if y'all know, I got an HR manager in here. But sleeping on the job 
is automatic. I stood up. And I said, yes, ma'am. I will sleep. She said, come on. And after that incident is when she promoted me to leave. She said, because I can trust you, you honest. Even if it was going to cost you your job, you were still honest. You ain't got to lie, Craig. You ain't got to lie. But he has integrity in prison. Why should a child of God perform well in a position that's not aligned with their dream? Because the prison ain't the palace. I was wrongfully accused. Why would I stay with my dignity and my honor while I'm in prison? This ain't where I'm supposed to be. But you need to understand something, beloved. If God allowed it, then that's God's plan. Y'all, most of us don't even understand that if you look at your life and look at it from a past situation, like a hindsight situation, you'll see that all the things that God allowed to happen in your life really was working in your favor. Do I got a witness in here that can say, if I had to do it all over again, I'd just let the same thing happen to me all over again. I wouldn't change a thing because I understand that God was orchestrating that thing to make me who I am today. And at all that time, I'm sitting up thinking that if things were different, God said, no, nah, the reason why it had to happen is because it had to make you the person that you are today. Is there anybody in here that could give somebody a high five and say, I thank God for the life that I have because God worked it out for my good. Joseph is the prime example of making the best out of a bad situation. But how many of us know that an idle mind is the devil's workshop? That's what, I don't know, my mama taught me that. She said, baby, the idle mind, all this stuff coming to, it, when you get into real life, all of the stuff your mama said to you, it makes sense. It, it was like, what, what is she talking about? It's like, why is my mama all of a sudden this deep theologian that's always got something to say? But now that I'm living life, all of it's coming back to my My mama told me, she said, baby, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. I said, mom, what? What do that mean? Y'all, have you ever been in prison? If you've ever been in prison before, you got a lot of time to think. <laughs> uh, a lot of time to think of why you're in the place that you're in. Y'all, if you've ever been to prison, either you're thinking of two things. How I got here, or how I'm getting out. <laughs> And when I get out, what's my plan of action of not coming back here? But Joe is in prison. He's got a lot of time to think about why is he in here. Says, reason why I'm in here, because the core of it is my own brothers threw me in the pit. Y'all, don't sit here and act like you super spiritual and in your low place, you didn't start thinking about your history and didn't think, you, don't, don't, don't sit here and act like you didn't uh, say if mama and daddy would have stayed together, my life would be better. Yeah, uh, if I never met him, my situation would have been better. If I never had this baby, my life would have been in a different place. If, if you would have supported me, then I would have been in a different place. If I, if I known then what I know now. Let me introduce you to Romans 8 and 28. The Romans 8 and 28 factor. 
<laughs> for the Bible says all things <laughs> work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. See, what you don't realize is that God allowed your parents to break up on purpose because they, if they would have stayed together, you wouldn't be who you are today. <laughs> God allowed you to meet that person to show you what not to get into in your future. See, a lot of people thought that relationship broke you. No, that relationship showed you what to look for. It showed you what to not accept in a new relationship. That baby, watch this, even though you despised the baby, that baby saved your life. Because there was times you wanted to give up, but you didn't give up because of that baby. The lack of support is what drove you to prove them wrong. I wish I had some real people in here. You know the fact that they counted you out. You kept on pressing because the people who told you you wasn't going to make it, the people who told you you wasn't going to succeed, the people who told you you wasn't going to amount to nothing, you wanted to prove them wrong. Your ignorance is what drives you to share the knowledge to the young people now. The reason why you sit people down is you say, if, if, if I knew, if somebody would have just pulled me to the side, if somebody would have just talked to me and say, baby, I see a snake in him. If, I, if somebody would have been bold enough to tell me how to raise my babies, it takes a village. I needed a village and I'm going to be the village that I didn't have. Is there anybody in here that can say, I know all things work together because it worked together for me. And if it wasn't for everything that happened to me, I wouldn't be the person that God made me. Touch your neighbor, say it's all in your favor. <laughs> and when you're in a low place, it doesn't mean that you're not, st you're not still on track for your destiny. How many people can slap your neighbor high five and say, I'm still in my destiny? <laughs> I'm still in my destiny. I know it hurt, but I'm still. I know it's confusing, it's confusing, but I'm still in my death. Y'all, you ever look at your situation and say, God, why me? Touch yourself and say, I'm still in my destiny. Uh, 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 all of the people that don't worship God and appreciate God the way you do, and God sent you through this, come here, Joe. Job, Job said, listen, I worship God to the point that had my children made a mistake, not him. The Bible says that Job went and made an atonement for his children because they had a party. He said, in case they did something wrong, God, I want you to forgive them. His faithfulness got him offered up. Y'all, how is it that the faithful are the ones who get tested? I got an answer for you. Because without a test, there's no testimony. Without the breaking, you can't get stronger. There's no, if, if there's no resistance, then you can't get muscles. So the reason why you're going through what you're going through is because God is answering your prayer to get stronger in God. Y'all missed that. God, I want your favor upon me. God, I want you to make me stronger. I want you to use me. And God said, that's what I'm doing through your trial, through your tribulation, through everybody talking about you, with everything that's going on in your life. I'm using you to show people that I am the God of resilience. I'm the God that can keep you. I'm the God that can allow you to keep on going. You got to praise God in spite of, because you understand that I asked for this. Watch this. But when you look at the situation, you know, he puts him 
in position, Bernard, puts him in position, and if he would have kept a bad attitude, he would have missed his blessing. What opportunity did he have in prison? The Bible says that the chief baker and the chief cut bearer has been sent to the prison up under Joseph. Y'all, we did read the text where the, the text says that he was had the authority over all the prisoners. So what the text is trying to reveal to us is that be careful who you have rule over. Y'all, I'm, I'm in the Bible. For the Bible says be careful how you entertain strangers because you could be entertaining angels. I, I'm glad I got a couple of Bible readers. You don't know that the reason why God tells you to love your enemy is because your enemy got the power to be your footstool. If he was an evil prison guard, that's basically what he became, uh, then he would have did these boys wrong. The Bible says that God sends them a dream. Yeah. <laughs> He's a dream interpreter. God, you didn't send them brokenness and need him to heal. You didn't send them a, 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 a word that they needed prophecy to. You sent him a dream because you knew that Joseph was a dream interpreter. Y'all yeah. missed y'all cue to shout. Yeah. <laughs> God is setting things up where people are talking about you in the room with you not around. And what's happening is what God is doing, he's making a need for you before you even step in the room. Woo! I shout by myself. Because what's happening is, as you continue to keep doing what God has called you to do, God is making room for you. See, you thought your gift making room for you and pre presenting you before great men was just going to be an opportunity and you was going to just sign on the dotted line. No, you got to turn around in a low place uh, and learn how to worship in a low place uh, and learn how to use your gift in a low place uh, and learn how to use your gift when you feel like you ain't gifted. Uh, God says, listen, you got to learn how to use your gift even though it seemed like you're cursed. Are you using your gift when it seemed like you cursed? Y'all, ask yourself the question. Had a series of things bad happen to you? Tell me that you wouldn't tell people to scoot over. Don't hang close to me. I'm cursed. Everything I touch. Yeah, can I talk to the real people? Everything around me is coming down. I, no, just, just save yourself. Y'all, can I be real? Y'all, when things happen like this, you're like, if it's my punishment, it's my punishment. But get away so it won't involve you. So that you won't be a casualty of being my friend. Y'all, he still uses his gift even though the enemy tries to tell him he's cursed. Every time I get in a good place, something bad happens to me. Y'all missed it. I say every time I get in a good place, something bad happens to me. Almost like every time I use my gift, my gift makes me a target. 
I used my gift at home. My brothers threw me in a pit. I used my gift in Egypt. The woman lied on me. Now I'm using my gift in prison. But he still uses the gift. Touch your neighbor and say, don't stop using your gift. That's what the enemy wants you to do. That's his assignment, is to suppress your gift. Y'all, y'all I, I, I'm talking about even in your worst place. You could turn over and say, you know we ain't supposed to be doing this. This guy, God said that if you want this, you're supposed to marry this. You can literally be smart. You know we ain't supposed to be doing this. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to get out of this. Y'all, I've, I've talked to people who were addicted to crack cocaine and said that when they got high, they would start preaching to the people that was in the crack house. Y'all, and they said preaching got them out of the crack. You got to use your gift. Even when you're in a low place. <laughs> Because here's the thing, Deb, and I want to talk to y'all for a moment. We all fall short of the glory of God. Y'all, Joe had a lot of time, Annie, he had a lot of time on his hands to plot on how he was going to get his brothers back. The Bible says that the chief cupbearer, his interpretation of his dream, Baker, you're going to die. Cup bearer, you're going to be restored. I'm fast tracking this because we already passed our time. Uh, he, the cup bearer, he says, the only thing I ask you to do when you get back, when you get restored, remember me. Woo! How many of us have made that same claim? You didn't sacrifice for people. You done did things for people. You honestly can say if it wasn't for you and God, they wouldn't be in the position that they're in. And the only thing you ask of them is to remember me. Y'all, for a long time, I gave the cupbearer a bad rap. Because I said the cupbearer, it took him two years. Joseph, after the cupbearer was restored, it took two years for the opportunity for the cupbearer to say, what about Joseph? He's in prison. Because God allowed Pharaoh, the king, to have a dream that nobody could interpret. Again, the gift. <laughs> uh, but I gave the cupbearer a bad, a bad rep, Tracy, because I said, why did it take you two years? But the Bible says, wait on it. Tarry for it, but it will not tarry. In other words, God's timing is not our timing. If he would have said something and, de and, and the king wasn't as, as desperate as he was, then he might have messed up and put, and when the position was put in place, for God to push him into a place where he needed Joseph, he would have probably ignored it. So the cupbearer did what he was supposed to do. And he had to wait for the opportunity. Because you have to have, you have to wait till the opportunity present itself to speak to the king. He waits till the opportunity comes, and he says, I wait, I remember. There was a man down in prison. Now, he comes up, long story short, he comes up, he interprets the dream, and Pharaoh says, these seven years of famine is coming. Because he says the dream was interpreted there's going to be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. He says, I need somebody with wisdom to be able to govern this because we need to store up the seven years of plenty, 
so that we can survive the seven years of famine. So he says, I won't put you in charge. I want to put you in charge so that I can make sure that everything is fine. Watch this. Joe knew that the seven years of famine was going to cause him to be able to see his brothers again. Here's where I want to talk to the realness of us. Because Joe didn't greet them with warm arms. He didn't open his arms and say, them my brothers, bring them to my chambers. Let me greet them. This text that we're talking about today is after he tortured them. Y'all, what do I mean? If you read the Bible, the Bible says that he gave them grain. But he slips a silver cup inside of their sack that indicates that they stole something from the king's palace. I wish we would be real with ourselves. When the opportunity comes for us to get a little bit of get back. (laughs) We skip over this part, Mel. Because we just look at the fact that he opens up his arms and says, I'm your brother. Don't be worried. Come closer. Because what you did to me, God meant it for my good. But in between that, we see that God shows the humanistic side of man. Y'all, can I teach y'all for one second? The reason why God shows the humanistic side of man, because what he wants to let us know is that even though we have faults, problems, issues, concerns, God still can use you. (laughs) You missed your cue to shout. Even though you got problems, Because until this point, they're showing Joseph to be perfect. He did not say anything about being thrown in the pit. He did not say anything about being on a block and being sold to Potiphar. He did not say anything about the woman who accused him. He didn't say, I'm in here falsely. This is a lie. But when when it came time for him to get his brothers back, God had to show that he was still human. See, most of us, we, we get caught up. That's why the Bible says in Romans 8, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus because we will condemn ourselves thinking that because of the thing that we slipped in last night, I ain't worthy to be used by God. One of the reasons why some of us won't step up in ministry It's because we think we're unworthy. God said, I use a lot of unworthy people. Read the Bible. I use David, who was an adulterer and a murderer. I said that David was a man after my own heart. And I already knew what he was going to do. See, this is the reason why I praise God. And I'm going to get out of here. The reason why I praise God is because he know my faults. When I say faults, I'm talking about the things that's deep down in the inner secret closet. I ain't talking about the stuff that's on the surface level closet. I'm talking about the deep things that don't nobody know but me and God. God know that stuff and still call me. Things that I did things that I didn't do. God still knew that and still called me. Y'all missed it. The imperfections of man are present before God. And the Bible says that before the world was formed, 
before there was ever a problem, God presented a solution. I wish I had a witness up in here that can say the God that I serve, uh, that he's the one that can provide a solution uh, before there ever is a a problem. uh, Before I had a problem in my flesh, uh, God had a solution for my flesh. Uh, Is there anybody in here uh, that knows the Bible uh, where the Bible says where sin abound, uh, that's grace much more abound. Uh, Somebody in here need to tell your neighbor uh, that your sin can't can't outdo God's grace. Uh, So in other words, what he's trying to say uh, is that no matter what you do, uh, his grace still covers you. Uh, Is there anybody here uh, that can understand the fact that if it wasn't for his blood the blood of Jesus for the Bible says without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin we just had communion last week you might know about the blood it's the blood that still works over 2,000 years later even though I got faults even though I got issues even though I got concerns the blood still works I wish I had a witness in that building huh, that would stand to your feet huh, and say I'm a living witness huh, that the blood still works huh. I'm a living witness huh, that it still covers me huh. it still carries me huh. it still pushes me huh. it still motivates me huh. is there anybody here huh, that can tell your neighbor huh, that God huh, still provides his blood huh, and his blood still works huh. somebody shout yes huh. somebody shout yes is. Somebody shout the blood still works. It was the blood on Calvary. They pierced him in the side. Put a crown of thorns on his head. Pierced him in his arms. Pierced him in his feet. Lifted him up. And for me he died. Is there anybody here that can tell your neighbor but that's not how the story is. Because in three days he rose again. Somebody shout he got with all power he got up with all power in his hands somebody shout yes somebody shout yes somebody shout yes he died for me and that's the reason why I shout I give God glory I give God praise because it's time to let it out if I could get three people to stand to your feet and say you know what after all the struggles I've been through after all the problems I had to go through this is a season where I gotta get it out this is a season that I gotta holler it out somebody shall holler if you feel me somebody holler in this building somebody let that thing out somebody shout yeah Yes, yes, oh yeah, oh yes, oh yeah, somebody shout yes, somebody shout yes, somebody shout oh yeah, holler if you feel me. The Bible says, that after all Joe been through, he was tired of it all. He was tired of covering up. He was tired of wearing a mask. He was tired of hiring his feelings. He was hiding it. The Bible says that he finally got tired of it. It says he couldn't take it anymore. That he hollered and the whole palace heard it. Some of us got built up frustration. You've been covering up. You've been wearing a mask. You've been acting like everything is all right. You've been acting like you got it together. When people ask you, are you okay? You just naturally respond and say yes, but you're not okay. God says it's time to let it out. God says it's time to release it because the holler came with exposure.
Here's the thing about exposure. Everybody can't see it. Because the text says that he hollers and tells them to get out. Just me and my brothers here. I need to expose myself to them and let them know this was all on God's purpose. Some of us in here right now are in the middle. Maybe you at the Potiphar's wife lying on your face. Maybe you at the throne in the pit and got a broken rib and a broken ankle face. Maybe you've been sold for cheap face to your enemy. Maybe you in a prison phase where you're, you're like, I didn't do this, but I'm being punished for it. God, I did what you asked me to do. Why am I going through this? God, I've been faithful. Why am I going through this? This don't make sense to me. There'd be a difference if I was going the other direction. But God, I, I'm going where you asked me to go. Might have had seasons where I was crawling, but I was still going in your direction. Might have had seasons where I sat for a minute, but I didn't go backwards. God, but I kept going. Why am I going through this? Joe says, I got to let it out. He hollers. And he exposes himself. Now, I waited until it got real quiet in here. Because I need y'all to let this thing out. If you know you've been going through something, you've been covering up stuff. People at church don't know. People in your family don't know. People around you don't know that there's an inner fight going on in your mind. Some days you feel like it. Some days you don't. Some days you feel like getting out the bed. Some days you don't. Some days you feel like living. Some days you feel like death is a present and a gift to you. God says this is a season where I'm about to allow you to release that thing because it's been bottled up too long. If you know I'm talking to you, stand to your feet. We're about to holler this thing out. We're about to let it go. 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 If you know I'm talking to you, it's real quiet in here. But on the count of three, we're going to let it out. One, two, three. Release it. 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 Let it come from the inner pits of your gut. From your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Holla! I will no longer be bitter. I will be better. I will not let it consume me. What they did to me will not consume me. How they treated me will not consume me. How they treated my family will not consume me. 
I will release it from this point on. God, it's in your hands. You said vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I don't have to get them back, you will. I release it to you right now. I release it to you right now. What he did to me, how he beat me, how he did me wrong. I feel your pain. You planned even 10, 20 years later that you was going to get him back. God said, release it. Let it go. Release it. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Because what they did to you was God ordained. What they did to you doesn't define you. What they did to you how they mishandled and mistreated you because they did not understand who you are. Don't mean that your value has decreased. God just will put you in the hands of people who know your value who know your cost, know what you've been through just because they mishandled you don't mean that God devalued you. If you're not too afraid, I need you to minister to your neighbor. Just hug them and say, you're worth everything that you've been through. Tell them, you don't have to suffer no more. You don't have to suffer no more. You don't have to cry silently no more. You got a cry partner. You got a prayer partner. You got church members that are here for you. Y'all see people being missing. This baby back here, did somebody hug her? Did somebody hug her? Did somebody hug feet? Somebody come up here and hug feet. Somebody hug Trusty Rucker. Amen. Come on, let's do it. Let's do it quick, 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 quick. Y'all don't know what these hugs mean. You don't know what this love means. I've been hurt for so long. I didn't know how to receive a hug without bad intentions. But I thank God I can come to a place where I can receive love without bad intentions. Somebody just hug on me. Somebody's missing somebody today. Somebody's missing somebody today. And I need to tell you that the person that you're missing is watching over you. They still love you. They're still encouraging everything that you're doing. They're pushing you. They're, 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 they're motivating you be what you need to be in God. Their spirit is with God. But because they love you so much, they're also with you. You realize that person's memory is that person's spirit with you. That's why I preach all of my mama's sayings because my mama is still with me. Everything she taught me, everything 
that happened in my life, I still can hear my mama's voice. <laughs> my mama wouldn't be proud of this. Or my mama would be proud of this. If you lost somebody, understand. that you never lost their spirit because their spirit lives in their memories. I don't know about y'all, but I feel my mother's presence. I feel it. I feel it. I feel my father's presence. So when God is looking to bless you, you were able to make it through, how much you persevered. I think another reason why Joseph hollered is because he finally realized that he made it to his dream. You could be in your dream. Your dream could be fulfilled and not even realize it. The Bible says it took him 13 years 13 years it took him. And out of those 13 years, 12 of them was in prison. He was in prison for 12 years before he got to his destiny. That's enough to make anybody holler. How long did it take for God to get you out of your situation? It could have been two years, could have been 10 days. But the fact of the matter is you out. And much there's much more to come, amen? Come on, let's get the Lord a hand clap of praise. I thank God for the release. Y'all, because we've been, especially after this pandemic, we have been mentally attacked. We have been dealing with stress. Our finances that went up, went down, went halfway back up, back down again. People have been dying on us, left and right. I ain't never been to so many funerals in my life. And that, that does something to you. It takes something from you. When you keep losing the people you love. Here's the downside of having a church that's like a family. Every time you lose somebody, it's like losing a family member. Y'all don't understand how hard it was with Mother Rogers and Marie. And I just. Then to deal with my own uncle all in a row. You don't know what you need to release until you release it. That's why NC Church 
is necessary. Because you can't get this at home. I know the snow detoured a lot of people today. But for those that press, they got their release on today. Y'all, tears are therapeutic. The Bible says, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Today you sold some joy. <laughs> you thought it was sorrow. But what you sold is going to reap a harvest. And that harvest is going to be of joy. Trouble don't last always. <laughs> it always get darkest before daybreak. It always get worse before it get better. But thanks be unto God that it will get better for those who don't give up on your dream. Come on, let's get the Lord a hand clap of praise as we open the doors of Jesus Christ. Amen. If there's anybody here that has not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, listen, today is a good day to get saved. Any day is a good day to get saved. God will accept you. He will take you just the way you are. God is a God that loves anyone. And we are a church of no judgment zone. God will love you just the way you are. No matter what confusion, no matter what issue, no matter what you believed before, God will accept you just the way you are. If there's anybody in here that has not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, all you have to do is raise your hand and say, Pastor, you're talking about me. I'll have you come down here and these ministers will pray with you give you the plan of salvation, you will leave here knowing that you are saved and sealed into the day of redemption. If you're here, you can raise your hand. If you don't fit that description, if you have accepted Jesus Christ, but you've been in a backslidden position, well, Pastor, what is backslidden? When you know you haven't done what God has called you to do, you haven't read his word, you haven't studied the word, you haven't prayed, you haven't fasted, you haven't been to church, you haven't been to Bible study, you haven't been to Sunday school, you know you've been in a backslidden position. I got good news for you. The Bible says that God is married to the backslider, meaning he's committed to the person that once knew him and loved him and worshiped him on a consistent basis and no longer does. So if you fit that description, all you got to do is raise your hand. Our ministers will come and pray with you. Amen. The baby says she's ready. <laughs> she raised her hand and said, it's me. <laughs> third, third call. Amen. Amen. Come on down here. Come on down here. Amen. I know I know you from somewhere. Yep, okay, that's what it is. Y'all stand behind her. The Lord told me to pray for you personally because there's something that you're about to embark on that you need a special anointing to deal with. It's going to irritate you to your core but you got to have the resilience to still love the unlovable. I don't know who it is, but they're standing in the way of your blessing. I don't know what position it is, but they're standing in the way. They are your test before he gives it to you. Lift your hands. Heavenly Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus. God, that you will bless this here, your child. God, you know what she's dealing with, oh God. I ask right now that you would show her, show her, oh God, that this test that she's about to go through, oh God, 
God, you didn't, they meant it for evil, but God, you're going to make it and turn it around for good. God, we ask right now that you would touch her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, oh God. God, and remove anything that is not like you, oh God. Help her to be as dedicated as you want her to be, God. Teach her your ways, God. Help her to understand your voice, oh God, to, so that she can hear you on a daily basis, to know exactly what she needs to do, oh God. God, as she repents of her sins, oh God, and turns from the things that are not like you, oh God. We ask right now that you would allow her to be closer and closer to you, oh God. God, as she came up here with both arms lifted, oh God, in worship unto you, God. We ask right now, oh God, that you would receive her worship, oh God, and receive her praise, God. Allow her to come forth and just bless you for what you have already done, God, because you've been a good God and you've continuously provided mercy God, and we ask right now that you will bless it. Bless her. Bless everyone around her. And we receive her coming to be with you. It is in Jesus' name we thank you and do pray. Amen. Amen. Bible says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart the Lord Jesus, that he died for your sins and God raised him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. Do you believe that? Amen. If you believe that, repeat after me. Say, I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins and God raised him from the dead. And because I believe that, I am saved right now. Amen. 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 She reminds me of my mother. Don't she? <laughs> she reminds me of my mother. God bless you. You can take your seat. Amen. We thank you. We welcome you. Amen. 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 Listen, the Lord is still blessing. Amen. And listen, if this isn't what we're about, we need to close the doors. If we're not about saving souls and encouraging people, then we need to close the doors. Ain't no gathering money and having social events and doing all that stuff. If we're not saving souls as Jesus commanded, Go ye therefore preaching the gospel to save the lost and baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Since we need to close the doors, this is our purpose. And so we should get excited when we're still fulfilling our purpose. There's churches that are not fulfilling their purpose. It doesn't mean that you got to have a church full of people to fulfill your purpose. They can get saved here and go somewhere else. But if, you, if you're fulfilling your purpose, then you know that we're doing the right thing here. Amen? Amen. Come on, it's giving time. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you all for being such a blessing in uh, trusting God and believing God. We are going forth in our believing in God and just trusting him with our tithes and our offering. Amen. The Lord has blessed us. Listen, if there's somebody here that, that, that likes to pay, you know, in lump sums, like if you know you bad in your, you know, in your tithing on a month-to-month -month basis and you got a lump sum of money, go ahead and knock it out now. Amen. That would be a, that, that's a wise thing. You got to go back and forth because the enemy will, let, let me tell you, I had to deal with a couple of bounce checks before I got it right. Y'all, I'm, I'm, I, I can't teach y'all if I can't be transparent with y'all. And one of the most embarrassing things is for the trustees to pull you to the side. Excuse me. We need to see you in the office. Pull me to the side and say, hey, you can take this check back. It's not made of paper. It's made of rubber. <laughs> That's 
years back when I didn't know how to manage my money. So you, you know when you don't know how to manage your money, when you be like, hey, they better hurry up and cash that check. <laughs> you get people come back up in here and be like, hey, 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 Tamika, why you ain't cash that check yet? <laughs> But if you go through the secure the bag, I'm going to teach you that when you write a check, you should never touch the money until the check. It could, it could go in three months. That money should still be in there. Unless you cancel the check, but that money should still be there. <laughs> but you should never write a check that you can That you can't know. Y'all heard. Y'all heard Mother Spencer said it. <laughs> she said it the nice way. <laughs> but I had to have a few of those mail. They had to bounce and embarrass me. Before I start, I said, let me stop at the bank and get cash. <laughs> and put my cash in here. Because it's a faith walk. It's not a hop. It's a walk. Man, and as you keep on going, you'll see yourself change. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gifts and the givers in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We have our announcements. And we're going to come right back and we're going to dismiss. Praise the Lord, Mount Charity family. Here are your announcements for this week. Here are some important dates that we want you to remember. Our Resurrection Weekend kicks off with our Good Friday service, which will be held on April 7th at 6.30 p.m. Every year, this service goes higher and higher, and we want you to be a part of this dynamic service. So on April 7th at 6.30 p.m., join us for our Good Friday service. Immediately following that service is our Pastor's Aid Annual Fish Fry. For more information, please see Sister Michelle Booker or Minister Melody Shepherd. And on Sunday, April 9th, we will have our resurrection service during our 11 a.m. worship service. This service will be in person and streamed on Facebook Live. So let's invite our family and friends to this powerful service. It is the return of our choir. If you are a person who loves to sing praises unto our God, this is for you. More details will be forthcoming. For our rehearsal dates and we are scheduled to sing on resurrection sunday please join us our diamonds in the rough women's ministry will be taking over texas for pastor sarah jakes roberts women evolve conference on september 14th through the 16th the diamonds will travel to arlington texas the price for this trip is 424 dollars and that includes admission into the conference hotel accommodations and you will receive a t-shirt Transportation to Arlington, Texas is not included in the package. To reserve your spot, a deposit of $75 is due on March 15th. There are only 15 spots reserved, and if you have any questions, you can see Sister Brianna Ray for more information. Hey, Mount Charity family. Your 2022 giving statements are now ready to be received. If you would like a copy, you can email treasurer at mtcharitymbc.org to receive a copy of your giving statement. Mount Charity, we want to connect with you on various social media platforms. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and even Snapchat and TikTok. You can also connect with us on our very own Mount Charity Church app, which is in the Apple App Store or in the Google Play Store. Of course, our prayer meeting is every Thursday at 6 a.m. virtually on Facebook, and we want you to to join us during this time to make the sacrifice and receive a word for that day. Sunday school is every Sunday morning at 9.30, which is taught by our dynamic ministerial team. And of course, our Sunday morning worship is every Sunday morning at 11 a.m., live on Facebook and in person. Happy birthday to all of those who are celebrating a birthday this week, from Pastor Belt and Executive Pastor Belt and the rest of your Mount Charity Church family. Take this time and thank God for letting you see another year. This concludes our announcements, and let's remember to give Thank you, to God. Brother Bernard, Minister Carter, amen, for blessing us with um, 
our announcements. Amen. We have been uh, digitized. Amen. We are in the future. Amen. So we thank God for that. Nobody has to get up here after a service like that and try to <laughs> and try to um, you know give announcements after a service like that. We just thank God that the Lord has blessed us with all talents and gifts in so many different areas. I love Mount Charity. Amen. I love the people we have here and we are so gifted in so many different ways and there are more gifts to come. Amen. Amen. There are more gifts to come. Amen. So I just thank God for that. I wanted to announce that Reverend Riggs was here but she is still a member but she's moved to Illinois. Amen. Just like our own uh, Minister Spencer goes back and forth from Georgia and all over the world. <laughs> she is still with us, and we are blessed to have them here still as ministers, uh, ministering to the people of God through here. They can easily find somewhere where they're at, but they still, even when they go to the other destination, because this is home, you know, you know, this is home. When they go there, they uh, still work here, amen? And I just thank God for that. I thank God for that. It's such a blessing to have great people um, uh, alongside of you that's working and love you enough to say, listen, even though I relocated, I'm still going to be with you. That's a blessing, amen? Amen. Amen. I don't. I, forget, I didn't get to see everything, but happy birthday to those who have a birthday. Anybody got a birthday today? All right. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Amen. If you're ready to get up out of here, come on, stand to your feet. Amen. Lady Spencer has um, announced to me that she wants to be. She's going to be a mother of this church. Amen. Amen. We got to go through the process. We got to go through the process and procedures. I am very, listen, I am very sensitive with this because, you know, if there's anybody else that's supposed to be a mother, please let me know because I don't, I don't, I don't want to push, you know, I got, you know, somebody checked me when I first got here and I thought they was a mother and they was like, no, I'm not a mother. And I was like, okay, well, I don't know what the age is for mothers. So I was like, I ain't going to never call nobody a mother until they tell me. Because, <laughs> you know, it only takes one time to walk up to a woman and be like, hey, when the baby do? It only takes one time. One time. <laughs> I'm not pregnant. <laughs> you feel like Pat Man, like, ew, ew, ew. <laughs> <laughs> it feels so bad and I was like I'm sorry ma'am I was about to call her mother again uh, but I, I thank God for her amen and so we're going to uh, we're going to have an actual procedure to uh, put her into that position amen and if there's any other mothers in the building or that we know of that want to be mothers we can do this all at the same time amen Amen. But you got to come to me. You got to come to me and tell me because I'm not going to tap you on the shoulder. Go, what makes you think I deserve to be a mother? So I just, she came to me. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give your name glory for you alone are worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same God. You're so worthy. We thank you for allowing us to release it so many struggles, so many issues, so many things that we've been through just in these few months of this year. God, we ask right now that you would allow us to understand that it's all working according to your purpose. It is all working together. It is all pre-planned for us. So even though we're in pain, God, we ask right now that you would help us to understand that our pain is a part of our purpose. For if you allowed your son to have pain for his purpose, you're definitely going to allow us to take up our cross and follow him. 
So we love you, God, and we thank you. We ask that you would walk with the walkers, ride with the riders, drive with the drivers until we meet again. It is in Jesus' name we thank you and do pray. Let every child of God say amen.